Okay, here I am with the body back on, on the golf cart, and I did forget to take a little bit of video um, for what I built underneath. So here's a very crude drawing, and that aluminum cross member was a loop, and it connected back to the frame down here. There's the gas tank. So I took two pieces of 3 8 plate aluminum, and I basically welded a stand here and a real heavy um, brace underneath. And that is what is underneath these areas. Now I have a solid attachment point underneath there. And what I'm planning on is um, I'm probably going to hole saw some plates and bolt those down so I have something to tack my cage to to actually begin construction. And I have the, the seats mocked up and they are where they need to be. I've got a piece of welding blanket that I can cover up the fuel cell instead of replacing or removing that. Um, that saved a lot of time. And so now I can uh, be confident that I'm not going to blow anything up, burn my shop down and all that because of a fuel tank right next to where I'm welding. All is well. All right. So I did a couple uh, math problems. And I'm pretty sure I have come to my conclusions of... These are my bend formulas. And if I'm correct, then I will have a cage that is shaped about like that. Now, this last bend, the third bend, I will basically just control based on all of my tolerances stacking up and the fact that I want 47 inches here and that this point is actually about one inch lower than this point. Um, my first bend, I'm gonna just add a little extra material, about a half inch, so that way I can trim this angle as the plate is bolted down to the car. Um, and same here, I'll trim that as needed because it, when it's in the dash bolted in, it'll actually be at a little bit of an angle back. So um, I'm going to take a full stick and uh, start bending, I guess, and see where I land. I have all of my bends marked out with electric tape. And to keep things simple, since I'm going to measure my final outcome and then record accordingly on that bend, it's not really critical as long as I've got my length. I just rounded 15.5, 39, and 80 inches. Uh, it's going to be close enough. This tubing is willing to bend a little bit as far as a ratchet strap might go um, for final welding and assembly. So uh, that's, that's what we're going to do here. I've got this here jug of mineral spirits to clean the tubing. I don't want to impregnate any oil into the tube that is on the metal right now as far as uh, you know the preservative oils that are sprayed on it at the mill. With all the pressure that this thing can build squeezing that tube into shape, it can literally um, impregnate the oil into that tubing and make it hard to um, clean and paint without fish eyes. So that's why we clean it. Also for the sake of cleanliness, I'll wipe these guys down. But I did hit some uh, 320 grit emery paper and, uh, and just polished up those steels a little bit. Made them so they'll uh, made them so they'll slide real easy on that tubing. Okay, so we have the tubing all marked out and we have the bender all set up and ready to go. So 
like I mentioned, I just have to clean the, um, the tubing off. I've got some mineral spirits and rags and um, kids out there pressure washer, pressure washing the dirt bike. And uh, so time to get some work done. For the sake of explanation, I have this top die off, just the bottom die is on, alright? So now that my tape is marking where my first bend will be, I align that with the front of that bottom die. Okay, the dirt bike's clean. So this top die is in, and this uh, bottom saddle is in place. And then this set screw here, I just tighten by hand. And then when I, um, when I start my beginning of my first bend, I'll just make sure it's snug after everything's kind of seated in those dies. But uh, the reason this is here is just to help keep the tubing from sliding out of position. So it just has to be snug, but we don't want to crush the pipe or gall it all up. And then this, um, this piece is, this arm is hooked to the hydraulic ram, so this will eventually pin into place in that die to help move it. All right, so now I have my angle finder here, and I'm going to zero it on the back end of the tubing. So now, as this bends, it's gonna pick up the front side, okay? And so now I can transfer it over here, and this first bend, I'm looking for 13 degrees. So I've got a air over hydraulic pump that's pushing the cylinder up. And it's going to be very easy to find that 13 degrees. And once I do, I'll measure what my stroke was. And that will help me duplicate that in the future. So now I'm at 12.5 degrees, 12.8, 13.1. I'm actually going to go to like 13.3 if I can, because there's always a little bit of spring back. All right, there's my 13.3. So now what I can do is measure that from the top of my cylinder to the bottom of this clevis, I'm at three and five eighths inches. So now I'll write that down next to that first bend. So on my second piece, I'll be able to duplicate that. Now I've released my pressure. I'm gonna come back over here, re-zero. Okay, that's at zero. Now I'm actually at 11.3 degrees. So that tells me that I have an even two degrees of spring back with this tubing. So I'm gonna pump it up to 14.3, just one. Try it again and and see where my spring back leaves me. Okay, I pushed it up a little bit. It's actually 15 one, so I might as well just go to that two degrees number. All right.
zero, fifteen, two, and an even four inches of stroke. I'll release it. And I'm right at 13 degrees. So I ended up having 2.3 degrees of spring back.